Inflation. The idea that a fraction of a second after the Big Bang, the expansion of the universe accelerated exponentially and the size of the universe increased by a factor of 10 to the power of 26 in each spatial direction. Oh, and it did this in a time frame so short that it could have happened 3 million billion 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 times over just in the time it took me to say 3 million billion 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 just then. This inflationary period in the very early universe had been proposed because there were three well-known problems with the classic Big Bang model of the universe. And these problems have become known as the horizon problem, the flatness problem, and the monopole problem. Here, we're gonna talk about nobody's favorite of those three, the monopole problem. I think it's fair to say that most researchers working on inflation now aren't doing so because inflation solves the monopole problem. The monopole problem describes a discrepancy between the theoretical predictions of the Big Bang model and the observations we actually make when we look out into space. In theory, the Big Bang and the universe immediately afterwards are ideal places for creating these weird objects called magnetic monopoles. What I say? Monopole. What's it called? Monopole. That's right, monopole. Not only should it be possible for these objects to form, but according to the theory, they should form in very large numbers, so much so that they should be the dominant component of the universe today. But when we look for them, we actually find exactly zero. No matter how hard we look, or even try to create in a lab a magnetic monopole, we just can't find any of them. Okay, before we get too caught up in where all these magnetic monopoles are, let's first ask the question, what the heck is a magnetic monopole anyway? Let's start by looking at a typical bar magnet like this that you've probably seen before. These always have two poles, a north pole in red and a south pole in blue. And since it has two poles, we call it a magnetic dipole. So the magnetic field flows out of the north pole and into the south pole giving a typical loop-like magnetic field that you might have seen before. We also know that the opposite poles attract and similar poles repel. But what happens if we try to break this bar magnet in half? Do we get a separate north pole and south pole in each hand, or do we get something else? Well, it turns out magnets are like worms. If you cut one in half, you just get two smaller magnets. Okay, it might be a myth that if you cut a worm in half, you get two worms, but it's not a myth for magnets. If you cut a bar magnet in half, you don't get a separate North Pole and South Pole, which would be magnetic monopole. You just get two bar magnets, both with a North Pole and a South Pole. So that doesn't work. We can't make a magnetic monopole, which is just one pole of a magnet, by just snapping a dipole in half. Let's consider if an object can actually be a monopole of any kind of charge. And you don't have to look far to find that, yes, objects can be monopoles of charge, just not magnetic charge. Electric charge is very similar to magnetic charge in a lot of ways. Just like the electric field is very similar to the magnetic field. They're related in a lot of ways. One key difference though, is we know for sure that you can have electric monopoles. The electron, one of the fundamental particles in the universe, is an electric monopole. If you were to draw the electric field around an electron, it would just be lines going straight into the electron because it has a negative charge. Similarly, there are particles with a positive electric charge, which just act as a source for electric charge. So their field lines are all coming out of them. The electric field lines for the electron aren't a closed loop like they seem to have to be for a magnet since all magnets seem to be dipoles. Electricity and magnetism are so closely related, often thought of as two sides of the same coin, that we only have one set of equations that describes both of them. These are called Maxwell's equations of electromagnetism. See, they're so closely related that we've even smushed their names together to name these equations. This is what Maxwell's equations look like. And if you haven't seen them before, they do look a bit confusing, but the details really aren't important here. I just want to point out one difference between two of them. So take these two equations and forget them, we don't need them at all here, and let's just look at the other two equations and notice what's different about them. On the right hand side of this first equation, we have this complicated looking term, but it really doesn't matter what all these symbols represent, we just need to know that this term corresponds to electric monopoles, such as electrons. This whole equation is about the electric field, and we know this because there's a big capital E in the equation for electricity. The corresponding equation for magnetism is this one, which we can clearly see is for magnets because it's got a big capital B in it for magnetism. But anyway, the important thing here is that the right hand side of this equation is zero. And this is because we've never seen a magnetic monopole, so we don't describe them in our equations of the universe. So over here we have a term for an electric monopole because we know they exist. And over here we just have zero for the magnetic monopoles because we don't know if they exist. If we ever find a magnetic monopole, then we just have to replace this zero with some term to describe the magnetic monopole, and the equations would be updated and totally valid still. Further to there being no reason why magnetic monopoles shouldn't exist, 
Their existence would actually lead to a lot of things we accept as true. Paul Dirac, a particle physicist and certified real smart guy, showed that if magnetic monopoles existed, even if it was just one of them in the entire universe, then this would imply that the electric charge could only take on specific values. This means that the electric charge is quantized, and this is very important for quantum mechanics. We've tested quantum mechanics a lot, and it's an incredibly successful theory. So this might well suggest that magnetic monopoles do exist, and we just can't find any of them. So why is that? Where are all the monopoles, and why can't we create one ourselves? Well, if monopoles had to be incredibly massive, for example, then they'd be super hard for us to create in a lab. This is just because E equals mc squared. Something with a lot of mass needs a lot of energy to create it. So maybe it's just too hard for us to do in a lab. However, they should have still formed in huge numbers during the Big Bang and in the early universe, but we still can't see any when we look out into space. So where are they all? This is where cosmic inflation comes in, and it solves the problem in a pretty neat way, albeit a little sweep it under the rug kind of style. Inflation says sure, maybe the Big Bang created a huge number of magnetic monopoles, and maybe they kept forming in the early universe, doesn't even matter. Don't worry about it. Even if the universe was completely full of magnetic monopoles at the start of inflation, this is not an issue. Inflation tells us exactly where they all went, and the answer it gives us is th they, went, they went somewhere else. Don't worry about it. Inflation simply says that no matter how dense the monopole population was, during inflation, the space in between the monopoles expanded so much that it left the monopoles so spread out in space that we'd basically never expect to see one. The potentially tiny space in between two magnetic monopoles is expanded so much during inflation that it could become the patch of space that grows into our entire observable universe. This means that, on average, we might expect to observe at most one magnetic monopole in our observable universe, or in any patch of space the size of our observable universe. Easy. Inflation solves another problem. It doesn't say that magnetic monopoles can't or don't exist, it just says that if they do, we'll probably never see one in our tiny patch of the universe. Of course, inflation is a hypothetical solution to a hypothetical problem. If our understanding of the Big Bang and the early universe is wrong, and magnetic monopoles were never able to be produced, then you don't need inflation anyway. So what do you think? Is this an elegant solution to the problem, or is it a bit of a hack? Either way, inflation works really well, and it easily solves this problem and many others as well. Check out the videos we've made on the other problems that inflation solves, and subscribe if you found it fun. Until next time, stay safe team, I'll see you soon. Bye!